right now, A&M money line, I just don't see a pathway for Notre Dame to, to get the win uh, well with their offensive line shortcomings and the fact that, you know, I looked at it. It wasn't just me, you know, you know crying chicken little on, on Notre Dame football. They haven't won a game on the road as a three-point or more underdog since 2012. They just quite simply do not win these games. I feel like I looked at a lot of games and there was sort of a healthy disrespect or a lack of respect for home teams. And I don't know that Florida should be favored, but Miami on the road as a favorite makes me nervous in Gatorland. Yeah. I mean, I think both teams are much improved this year that they have to be. If they're, you know, the, the, the seat is going to try to cool on both of the, the seats for the head coaches, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I'm, I'm more on the Florida side of things in this game. I'm just, no, obviously, you always want to shop for the best number. Right now, it's a juice two and a half, so that tells me that you know maybe we get a three. Our friends up north in Pepper Mill have a three right now, so uh, if you want to bet Florida, well, let's wait and get that all important three. I, I, I bet Florida in the game. I uh, it just you know screams to me that uh, you know Miami and Cam Ward uh, a little overrated as far as I'm concerned, and you know Billy Napier's on the hot seat, but I actually think he's a better coach than Crystal Ball. On Sunday here in town, we have US, uh, USC and LSU coming in, and right now LSU is minus four and a half. What are your thoughts on this game? I'm, I'm waffling. Uh, I mean, this line uh, came out eight months ago. I originally bet LSU minus six. Um, I was just thinking that they'd address their issues in the, the, on the defensive line, the transfer portal. They never did. So that, you know, I turned right around about a week ago and bet USC. Uh, and then, man, I just did a – deep dive podcast late last night and boy just talking it out uh well i that lsu offensive line against usc's defensive line it's tough for me to overcome that i think lsu they can have their way uh you know running right at usc so um if i had to bet it now i i would be more inclined to to take uh, to lay it with lsu any thoughts one way or the over on the total yeah, I think the, the public's going to want that over because, I mean, these were the two highest scoring teams in college football last year, but I think both defenses are improved. Obviously, and both offenses probably you know are losing historically great quarterbacks. So what I'm going to do is sit back and wait for the public because, obviously, it's going to be a very public game, standalone game on a Sunday night here in town. Uh, let's see how high this goes. And uh, I, I think near post, I'm going to be taking it under. Brad Powers up on Cofield and company, bradpowersports.com. Hit the website. Check out Twitter at Brad Powers 7 uh, I know you saw this news, but uh, earlier, SEC has approved mandatory injury reports for football, basketball, and baseball starting effective immediately. Football reports must be published on Wednesday. So what does this mean this season? And you, you and I have gone back and forth. I don't think we've debated it, but the value to you is a better of injury reports. And it's going to be interesting. Uh, I guess down the road, I guess – we're going to get into reports on one side and non-con situation. We'll get them from the SEC and might not get them from the other side. Yeah, that's a good, a good point there, at least uh, for this season. Uh, I, I just it, it probably depends on the leeway they give the coaches, uh, how strict they'll be, and, uh, you know, is everybody day-to-day, uh, like people right. like to say. Uh, that's how I'd be as a head coach if they allowed me to do it. I, I would not be very forthcoming. So, uh an opportunity maybe to take advantage of. I'd like to see, I'm anxious to see if there's an exact set time on Wednesday. Obviously, you got to be in front of the screen. Uh, is it going to be a uh, one release uh, or is it an individual school release? I mean, there's a lot to sort through there, but uh, I'm, I'm 50 50 on it. Yeah, I'd like to have some standardization um, for something like that. But then again, I like doing the work myself and unco- unco- uncovering certain injuries that, that, that a lot of people don't know about, whether it's a quarterback or cluster injury group uh, as far as a position. Uh, I, I don't mind doing the legwork and finding out stuff that, that the market might not know. Any chance we're going to start getting uh, hockey-type injury reports, players dealing with upper body or lower body? Yeah, I'm with the college kids and stuff like that. I'm sure that they, they won't be you know specific. million percent. So, uh, million percent it'll never be specific it'll be upper and low they do it now i mean even when you can get the information uh even when you you can see you know specifically what the injury is or they're not going to give you many more details yeah so i i i have some high hopes for it but again i i I think it's going to be pretty uh you know i don't think it'll be specific i'll just put it that way so I, i don't know how much of an edge it'll be 
Well, let's get to Clemson, Georgia. We've been talking about this game for a long time. Uh, Clemson's getting 13 and a half. Might go to 14 uh, by game time. What do you think? No, I don't know if it does go to 14. If it does, I think you'll see some buyback because I thought it was a quiet move last Friday night uh, on the screen that all the 14s got wiped out on Clemson. It just hasn't been a good fall camp news-wise for Georgia. Uh, They got cluster concerns at the running back position with injuries and suspension. One of their wide receivers was kicked off the team. It's been quiet on uh, Clemson's fall camp in a good way. Uh, Dabble does well in the underdog role, 12 and 1 is a five point or more uh, underdog. I'm not a big trends guy, but when it's a rare underdog role for him, and in fact, it's the biggest underdog role for Clemson in any game in a decade, uh, I, I'm tending to lean more on the Clemson side right now. Brad Powers up on Cofield and Company. Let's go rapid fire. I was just talking in, about you know certain games looking for an FCS upset over the weekend. I'll get to that in a second. But first, Penn State, West Virginia, very hyped game. Yeah, a lot of money on West Virginia all summer long. Uh, I'm part of the West Virginia money, but uh, there was a, a double-digit sign next to the, the bet that I made, and I'm just wondering how low this goes. Uh, you know, I, I would love to, to come back and bet even more on Penn State minus seven, but I'm not sure. I'm looking at the screen, it looks like uh, we're starting to see some buyback already on Penn State. Eight and a half is popping. Oki State trying to hold off South Dakota State. Maybe they blow them out. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't. South Dakota State's still number one in my FCS power rings, but they're, they're certainly not as good as what they've been the last couple of years. So I did downgrade them there. This line, believe it or not, was up at, at a book about six months ago. So I, I laid it with Oklahoma State. Right now, the current numbers, I'd lean under. Have you watched that uh, Netflix Connor Stallions documentary yet? I am not, believe it or not. I, I'm going to give you something you can make fun of me. I don't have Netflix. Oh, no way. Um, I, well, I have an addictive personality. I can't have something where I start binge watching stuff. That's too much. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the Fresno State game in Michigan plus 21? Uh, first half under for me. I think, you know, Michigan's quarterback situation isn't ideal, but uh, I do still think Michigan's defense is top 10. Obviously, you lose that outstanding play caller for Fresno State and Tedford. So first half under was one of my favorite plays of the week. By the way, I respect you for not having Netflix because I keep telling myself and my fiance, if that price keeps going, I'm going to cut it. I don't think I'll ever cut it. You're embarrassing. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Brad. I'll never have this guy talk to you again. This is uh, beneath Cofield and Company standards. I apologize. Uh, I'm kidding. UCLA's in Hawaii. Hawaii didn't look great. I don't go crazy off of you know week zero performances. What do we think of UCLA in general? And uh, is this an opportunity where they go in and they can beat the doors off of the Rainbow Warriors? Yeah, I, I don't either go crazy, but we've seen some crazy moves. We've seen the Nevada Troy game move, you know, almost a touchdown. We've seen the Florida State game at points move down five, six points. And yet, when I woke up Sunday morning, the Hawaii UCLA line hadn't even moved. I guess nobody watched the game. Uh, you have to downgrade Hawaii. They were a 40 point favorite in the middle of the third quarter. It's a tie ball game, and it was legit. I mean, why is one of their scores at that time was a punt return touchdown and Delaware State uh not like they had short field touchdowns, they go the length of field twice. So you had to downgrade them a point or so uh then that's being super conservative. Uh, so yeah, I ended up betting UCLA, I still would lean the Bruins minus fourteen. 